Welcome to Mind Your Small Business, a brand new podcast which makes starting or running a business easier. This week we're going to look at side hustles, which is something we discussed in episode one, briefly. I'm Gordon Rutherford from AXA, and this week I'm delighted to be joined by Raphael Sofaluk and China Mason. Raphael started the UK Black Business Show in 2017 after spotting a gap in the market while working in the events industry. When Raphael kicked it off, he was still employed in his day job, but now it's his full-time passion, and he is currently expanding to launch the first UK Black Business Week in 2021. China is the founder of That Doodle Girl, and China's an artist who draws in windows around her town, which is something I enjoyed doing as a teenager. The difference is that China has created something amazing out of it. It's an activity she describes as a way of spreading joy. That doodle girl actually started as an NHS fundraiser during COVID. So, good morning, Raphael and China. Good morning. Thanks for having us. No, oh, thank you so much for joining us today. Let me get the ball rolling with some numbers around this. According to Microbiz Mag, there are more than a million people in the UK who have a second job or are self-employed in addition to a primary job. That's 3% of the population. And interestingly, more than one in three people in the UK say that their salary alone doesn't allow them to have a comfortable lifestyle. Clearly, the financial aspect plays a big part in people's decision to set up a side hustle then. What about you, Raphael? What was your driver? I think initially starting off the UK Black Business Show, it really just, um, it, it, it was my passion for, for events. Um, it was my passion for, for people. Um, I, I wanted to um, change something in the events industry, which I felt um, was lacking. So, you know, the underrepresentation of black professionals in events um, and me not really having a space to network um, with other like-minded black professionals and entrepreneurs. So that was really my driving force behind creating it. Um, and I think it was really just a bonus that it started to um, bring in you know, revenue as well. Um, so it wasn't, you know, money motivated at that time. Um, however, it actually, it, it, it was a benefit for me because it almost kind of supplemented my salary um, while, while I was working a full-time job. No, oh, excellent. So, so the money thing wasn't a big motivator for you. And actually, I know exactly what you mean, Raphael, because um, I attend conferences from time to time and it seems that every panel of experts um, as white middle-aged males, uh, you know. So thank goodness that you took on uh, the challenge and, and and turned it into what you do today, Raphael. Turning to yourself, China, what was your motivation? So it it all kind of started with three AM anxiety around the pandemic, and that I felt so helpless. I, I didn't know how I could possibly help. You know, the NHS. We were all hearing how hard it was for them, and. Um, I just didn't know what I could do. Um, and then having three boys at home and homeschooling, stuff like that, um, as well as trying to work from home, I, f- I found it difficult, like most people. Um, and one day I decorated my own window. With, I was doing it with, with my little boys. And then somebody said, oh, if I pay you, will you do do it for me? And I was like, well, I don't I don't want to make money on something like that. You know, my window literally said, thank you, NHS and, and, and key workers. So, um, and it kind of was born from there. And, and, and like Raphael, it 100%, you know, I, I lost money by the end of it because I was paying out for pens and, and it all went to the end, you know, every money we went to the NHS uh, fundraiser. So, um, but it was about that passion. And, you know, with, with me, we raised £1,200 in 96 hours. It was so well taken. Um, so that's what, that's what my drive was. Wow, thanks, China. I mean, what a brilliant cause. Uh, and it's really interesting that both of your side hustles were born out of really strong, noble purposes. Raphael, if I can come back to you, what was the most difficult thing about running your side hustle at the same time as you were employed in a full-on day job? Well, well, I think it, it's probably it's probably the main kind of barrier, actually, which will allow you to kind of elevate your side hustle because... When you think about it, you're doing your nine to five um, and then you're coming home and, and depending on how busy it is or how hectic it, it is, you're going straight into that hustle. Um, so I was working the nine to five hours, coming home and probably working maybe from like 7 p.m. till till 3 a.m. and then waking up because um, at that time, you, obviously, everyone was traveling to work, you're waking up at six, then going straight to work again. 
so it, it, it was the hours which was um, really a huge, um, which was the hardest thing for me um, about running the side hustle. Um, but of course, as it grew and grew as well, um, it was just kind of managing my time um, with, with, with my job. Um, you, you get to that position where um, you probably have to make that decision. Um, you know, do you want to pursue your side hustle full time? Um, or do you want to kind of carry on balancing the two? Um, so yeah, it, it's, it, it was interesting, but um, I guess it's kind of worked out well for me now that I'm, I'm full-time with the UK Black Business Show and UK Black Business Week. Thanks, Raphael. I mean, you must have been exhausted. Knackered. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's tough. China, how about you? I mean, uh, what do you find most difficult about running your side hustle? It's definitely the work home life balance. Um, I work 30 hours for a big company and then I try and do kind of two days a week doing doodles. Um, and, you know, people will contact you last minute and I really struggle to say no. Um, I, you know, that's just that's in my nature. So sometimes I do definitely take on too much work over Christmas. I certainly took over took too much work. Um, so that's definitely the hardest bit for myself is is the the work life balance. Okay, I mean, I guess counteracting that, doing what you love, is is great, and following your passion is great, and that must uh, that must make it slightly easier, I guess, China. A hundred percent. It's really enjoyable once you're out there. It's just sometimes you think, oh, I'm missing time with my kids, or you know, I need to get some housework done. Um, but once I'm out there, I absolutely love it. It's amazing. I feel, I, I feel the luckiest person in the world to get paid to do the job that I do because I do love it so much. Um, so, yeah. No, I mean, that's it's cool because this is a theme that came up in our first episode with Holly Tucker and Amber Craddock, the whole thing about doing something you adore, something that you love, because if you if you do something you love, you'll be much better at it than, than doing something you don't love. But at the same time, you spoke about, um, you know, doing stuff for free, and there's only so long uh, that you can carry on doing work for free um, before it becomes, you know, a, a, a burden on you. Um at what point did you realise, Raphael, that your side hustle could make money? Well, um, I think, to be fair, very early on. Um, so we launched in 2017 um, with, you know, 25. It started off really small, so 25 exhibitors and 500 attendees. Um, so we booked a space for 25 stands. But during that year, we got, you know, over 300 inquiries for exhibitors. Um, so very early on, uh, very early on, I, I realised that, OK, um, it's bigger than I, you know, expected. And there was an appetite, there was a demand for, you know, black owned businesses to showcase and black entrepreneurs and professionals to, um, to, to network together. So, you know, we didn't take any investment. So everything was done through, through bootstrapping. Um, so we, you know, we, we put the show together through sales from exhibitor stands and the attendees. So yeah, it was it was really kind of early on that I, I noticed that you know this could also make money. It was a passion of mine, but it also could be very lucrative. Um, and then in the second year, we doubled again in terms of size um, in in 2019, um, in 2018, uh, and then by 2019 we have over 110 exhibitors, over 2,000. 500 attendees um we was getting quite a lot of features on bbc news and itv and um, so i think yeah that was the point and then we was working with some of the biggest corporates so i think over the years it's really just kind of stepped up each year but i think very early on you you, you kind of know it if if it's got potential um but then yeah as as the years go on you can just see how much potential it has and um how big it can actually be it must have been such an amazing moment um, when you realised that you could actually live off your passion. Um, that must that must be an incredible feeling, Raphael. Oh, 100%. Um, and, and I think you touched on something um, earlier on, is that, you know, when you love something you do, it's, 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 that's, that, that's what keeps you, that's what keeps you working hard, really. Um, so, you know, the, the late nights when I'm working on the UK Black Business Show, um, and the UK Black Business Week, it, it's the passion for it that, that keeps me motivated and keeps me wanting to work hard and gives me that extra kind of, you know, 
energy when I'm feeling tired. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's a fantastic feeling to be able to do something which um, it, it empowers everyone, which you know is creating space for for diversity um, and just you know changing the narrative and the perception of Black entrepreneurs and professionals. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, and turning to yourself, China. I mean, you uh, you're slightly different. You know, you you started out, you started that doodle girl, and you gave all the money away to the NHS because that was the purpose of doing it in the first place. Um, you know, and how how important is commercialising that doodle girl for you? Because obviously, as your passion, you do it because you love it. How important is it that you make uh, money from it? I mean, you know, I'm taking time away from my kids, so there has to be an element of making some kind of money. But at the same time, I don't want to commercialise it to the point where um, it doesn't feel joyful for me. That's that's my that's my moment where for me that it would have to stop there and right now it is a full side hustle for me I I have loved the journey that I've been on I've had some amazing experiences I've met amazing people and if it was to stop tomorrow I'd always be forever thankful um yeah that's kind of it really okay and I don't want to to create an awkward position with your current employer but can you ever see a moment when your side hustle becomes a full-time thing for you Right now, I probably couldn't because I'm also I'm I'm very lucky that I also really do love my other job as well, and I just feel like I have the best of both worlds where I do kind of have a corp job, um, you know, where I sit at home on my laptop and working from home, and I am guaranteed an income every single month, um, but I also have the possibility of of extending that and buying my boys, you know, more stuff or booking a, a special holiday, um, with Doodle Girl money. So I am very lucky and I feel very privileged in that way. Nice. Um I guess one of the one of the kind of cool things about side hustles is that it it can allow people to dip their toe into the water of running a business before going full on. Um because we spoke in the first episode about the the, the fear that stops many people from following their dream and uh starting their business. Whereas starting a side hustle allows you to uh, to kind of do that. Do you have any thoughts on that, uh, China? I don't think I do really. Just just in the sense of like making sure that it is a hundred percent a job that you love. <laughs> I probably didn't word it very well. What I was saying is, it's almost like a safe way of starting your business. You know, yeah. you, 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 yeah. you you don't you don't give up the day job and go full on and in, in terms of you know starting a business and then suddenly you realise you've got no cash and you know uh, what yeah. have you. I think you've got to be really really um, self disciplined at the same time though because it is so easy to just think well I can pay my bills so you know I, I can still live a comfortable lifestyle but you know I think stretching yourself if I ever am out of a job tomorrow. You know, I would go doodle girl full time. Of course, I would. I'd be stupid not to. Um, I'd, I'm not guaranteeing I'd have enough work to handle. Um, you know, a five day operation right now. But obviously, I'd I'd increase um advertisement and I'd go further afield because right now I stay quite close to where I live. So I think there's loads of stuff that you can do on that. But no, I guess I mean that that's absolutely true. If there was one one question that I, that I'd like to ask you, China, what do you wish you had known before starting your side hustle? That it's so much more than the job. People will see that you get paid a great amount of money for, for you know, standing at a window and drawing on it for two hours. And, and you do. But also, you know, the week, you know, two weeks before that, I drove to that business and I used petrol to dr- drive there and drive back. Um, you know, I spent two hours the night before or the week before drawing up the quote um you know social media now is huge i will get 90 percent of my workload through through social media but keeping that updated is massive you know it's facebook it's twitter it's instagram hashtags all the rest of that stuff so it is massive and when you go into things like algorithms um, and keeping your social media updated for an artist is actually really hard. Um, some weeks you might just be a little bit dry and it's not about posting for posting's sake. Um, for me, I did a post recently about saying that I need to post for joy and something that I'm proud of, not just to keep algorithms happy. OK, thanks, China. Raphael, coming back to you for a second, are you noticing any 
side hustle trends? I mean, do you have any tips on what might be the next big thing in side hustles? Yeah, so I think, uh, I think especially um, during d- during recessions, first of all, you know, businesses are created. Um, so I think a lot of side hustles, um, I, I think, ha- have been created um, during during this last recession and um, what we've kind of been through. When you look at some of the businesses like Airbnb, Disney, WhatsApp, Microsoft, HP, these were all created during you know recession time. So I think. Um, that we're going to see a kind of a, a number of new, you know, digital businesses. Um, I think we'll see creative businesses like 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 China's um, what, what China's created as well. Um, so yeah, I, I, I kind of see a trend of just kind of new ideas, digital businesses, um, and just things that will ha- have have a lasting impact on society. Indeed, I mean, in in the first episode of this series, we spoke about the uh, the sheer volume of new businesses starting up in the UK, and I think it's more than three quarters of a million in in the last uh, year, which, in, in you know, in the light of a pandemic, is is quite staggering. Um, and China, what about yourself? What any tips on what might be the next big thing? Um, I've obviously only been in 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 the hustle for well just over a year now. So for me, it was all about window art. Um, florals were massive. Now we're going more about botanical. Um, but one thing I've seen a massive shift in is wedding stuff, and that that makes me really really happy. Weddings were always paused. I never thought it'd be something that I would ever be asked to do. Weddings are now kind of starting to ramp up again, and and I'm doing chalkboards and I'm doing invitations and. To be part of someone's special day like that is just insane. I love it. <laughs> Lovely. And and finally, Raphael, what advice would you give to someone thinking of starting a side hustle? My advice would be to, first of all, research. Um, you know, know your market. Um, know exactly what you're trying to do and, and, and make sure you, you execute it properly. Um, but also, just remember that if your side hustle is related to your job, then it can be a huge benefit for you to just stay in your job um, and, and, and learn um, learn some of the key things and which are going to help you develop your side hustle. So I would say, first of all, don't be too quick, quick to, to, to quit your day job um, and, and get excited over your side hustle. Um, make sure you've got enough capital um, to be able to make sure that, you know, when you do leave, you, you can go full time. But yeah, certainly, you know, make sure you learn, research um, and understand your market. Sage words. Um, and anything from you, China? Um, I think you, you have to work hard. Anyone that asks me, oh, my God, how do you write so good? How do you draw so good? Um, I'm dyslexic, so spelling's absolutely against me i didn't do any kind of art at school so i think the odds can kind of be against you sometimes but if you work hard i sat here for months with calligraphy books and doodle books and stuff like that and and practiced in front of the tv with my boys and stuff like that and i think stepping out of your comfort zone um i've been so lucky to have some of the opportunities that i've had you know i've got a local filmmaker called gavin sturgeon and he comes out and films me on my travels um, I was in a Facebook advert with Will Meller and our local MP and it would have been so easy for me to stop and go, oh my God, I'm not ready for that. Um, but I pushed myself, I went out of my comfort zone and it, it, you know, it's just such an amazing feeling. Thank you. Thank you, China. So you were almost at the close of today's episode um, and traditionally we wrap up with the takeaways and I think um, the takeaways from me from the conversation we've had this morning are that you know, first and foremost, side hustles are a great way to dip your toe into the world of self-employment. Um, as long as, as, as Raphael says, you're prepared for the really, really long hours and all the peripherals that go with running a business. Um, you need to be prepared to work hard. You need to do your research, do your homework, um, and, you know, make sure you're forecasting your cash appropriately. But again, you know, similar to episode one, you know, it helps if you do what you love because when you do what you love, you generally do it better. All that's left to say is a massive thank you to Raphael Sofaluk from the UK Black Business Show and that doodle girl, China Mason. Now, plug time. China, you mentioned your socials earlier. How can people find your business? Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter on um, at THT Doodle Girl. 
Excellent. And Raphael? Yes, so you can find me on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, at Raphael Sofaluk. And also you can find the UK Black Business Show on um, all of the platforms at UKBB Show. Fantastic. Okay, thanks, guys. And if you enjoyed this episode, you can subscribe to the series via your usual podcast app. If you want to find out more about the Mind Your Small Business series, you can do so at www.axa.co.uk forward slash podcast. You can get also uh, loads of brilliant small business advice from AXA's Business Guardian Angel site, which is at www.axa.co.uk. In the next episode, I will be joined by three special guests to talk planning and productivity. I look forward to welcoming you. And again, from myself and Raphael and China, goodbye.